and we're go. Okay. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. Really excited for tonight's poets. They're both spectacular. And um, this is year 24, season 47, episode one of KGB Monday Night Poetry. Um, so many amazing poets have done this and the goal that we've had uh, during this whole COVID era has been to try to keep it alive. And it's led to some really kind of fun, interesting experiences for sure. Um, we have some people in the audience today that you know have been here a bunch of times. I'm thinking back to the reading when Don Yorty was burning the poems and all of that. And when the poem caught fire, I thought at first that it was an accident that it like hit the candle and he didn't notice. And, uh, but a lot of fun stuff has happened. So, but that said, we would much rather be in the bar and uh, we hope to see everyone there as well, maybe as soon as this fall. Um, so thank you guys for coming and I will uh, pass it off to uh, Jason. Oh, wait, wait, say, say, how, say how many, how long we've been here. Oh yeah, uh, year 24, season 47. Episode one. Yeah. All right, Jada, you're up. Okay, for some reason this says my video can't start because the host oh, has yeah. disabled it. So. Wait, I, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, let me change it's that. Okay. I Try it now. All right, oh. we're back. When I had first heard Don Lundy Martin read, it was at AWP Portland in 2019. It was my first time at AWP and the loud and exciting convention halls were all encompassing. However, when I stopped and listened to Don Lundy Martin read, the atmosphere around me fell silent. Her words magnetic and her reading was precise and focused. Upon reading her work on my own, that same focus and magnetic energy was successfully displayed on the page. She's a poet and activist and on the page it shows. However, Don Lundy Martin is able to convey unflinching work with a touch of tenderness that makes the reader confront dense realities. Poet, essayist, and activist Don Lundy Martin earned a BA at the University of Connecticut, an MA at San Francisco State University, and a PhD at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Her poetry collections include Discipline, chosen by Fanny Howe for the Night Boat Books Prize, and a, gather, a Gathering of Matter, a Matter Gathering, which was selected for the Cave Canem Poetry Prize by Carl Phillips and was a finalist for the Lambda Literary Award. She is also the author of Life in a Box. Well, sorry, Life in a Box is a Pretty Life and Good Stock Strange Blood with Vivian Labaton. M Martin co edited The Fire This Time, Young Activist in the New Feminism. She also, con she also co founded both the Third Wave Foundation and Post Theorist Black Took Collective. She has received the Academy of American Arts and Sciences May Sart Sartin Prize for Poetry, as well as grants from Massachusetts Cultural Council. She has taught at the University of Pittsburgh, the New School, and Bard College. Everyone give a KGB welcome to Don Lundy Martin. Hi, can you hear me okay? The mic yeah, okay? great. Mike by MRA. Thank you for that intro. Some throwbacks in that intro. Um, <laughs> Let me, um, I'm so, I'm so glad to be here. Um, thank you, Jason, for inviting me. Um, I come to you from my attic in, in Pittsburgh, also my yoga room, also my writing studio. Um, and I'm so, you know, I, I love you, Carl, and I'm so happy to read with you. Um, yeah, I'm just going to read some, some poems. I'd like to, I, I want to encourage y'all to put it on speak review, but you don't have to. And also for some muting to go on so you can see the speakers, but I'm not running the show. So, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, thank, thanks for coming. I'm going to read some poems. I'm going to read actually from, um, let me, I'm going to start my timer so that I have a sense of um, how long is I'm talking. Um, hold on. All right. I'm actually going to start by reading um, poems from Life in a Box is a Pretty Life because um, I don't know, they seem relevant to me now in a way that uh, refreshes the poems for me. Um, so I'll start there and then I'll read some newer work. Um, yeah. 
So here we go. And what should I say about these poems? Okay, um, hmm. Um, I'm not gonna say much, but I will say that um, the poems are entitled. So you're just gonna hear me reading. They have these kind of uh, all caps moments um, that are kind of like, I guess they're kind of like section titles. Um, thank you for witnessing my um, outerwear inside because I never go anywhere. So <laughs> I never have anywhere to wear the outerwear, uh, whatever. Um, okay, here we go. This is from Life in a Box of Pretty Life. Um, when we are inside the prison, we can only think of beauty. Power is exercised where it can be exercised, exacting, precision, spectacular momentum. 99% of the time, the ones in power will act like victims will say, we're not in power. We're trying to save all of us. It's for the sake of order. The current conditions are unforeseen. They will say, it's not our fault or we didn't notice. How can we notice when the buildings are burning? We're doing everything we can, they'll say, and our hands are tied. Bayonets already positioned, figures in white, shadowy through smoke. They appear to dance in halftime, jangle mo, distracted by concretions. Historically, we extend, we drift into, we are back straight, we bind, we draw, we categorize, we are punitive with regard to fairness only. We are method, we are order. What would you do without us? Oh, we are so very smitten. The body, an upright suit designed as intent, smooth over belly filled with unsafe dock meat. Leniencies follow. Enter the building with your special pass. Checkpoint around skin. The black apostle comes to me in a cowboy hat. Dear angel, I say, I cannot fuck you tonight. My father is dead. Button shirt up to collar. Being in love with the pitch of experience means one must wear a common cloak. Violence stuns the body into submission how to know what violence is. Always inches from disappearance, from swelling into unrecognition. If we could come to you, we would. Assistance is in our nature. We are without motive, but we must operate within constraints, fresh as new leaves. This is our approach. The wall is not a blockage or a guardian, but an alignment. An alignment is an affection. An affection is a twist in the loins, which we, in all our wisdom, know is the right thing. How is a mouth supposed to open willingly? which demands from the incident. All reservations on hold so that the skin might ache properly. Integument listener, volumes in ink and inquiry and yet no face against the written. We have learned that progressing is a quiet thing. A desire to rip the bottom out of experience. These bodies, they say, are ungovernable. It will hereby be observed that niggas get shot in the face for that menacing, threatening look. I, now a dead woman, hunt leaves as might a child, swing up through my own lack, my own chaos, hurt staged in the lung. They ask me of the paralytic, of the collapsed upper aperture. But what of this human need mouths my mute?
When the eye speaks accosted, excerpt from temperament. One is not allowed temperament, especially for a body that is already gesture and antagonism, a wig. The most threatening physique is wiry, something felt in the reaction to it, a feeling as in an imagination or a creation or a repetition. Feeling is lodging a human living form that is a bark. My wood barks into the night, strains, holding and consumption. Your pink bubbly babies are safe. Everyone is safe. Is everyone safe? Everyone is safe. Is everyone safe? Which is an offering and which is a laceration? Okay, so that's all from, I'll read from Life in a Box. Um, I said y'all should go into uh, speaker view, but when I go into speaker view, I just see Jason. <laughs> do you see me, Jason? I do, I see you in speaker. You see me, I see yeah. you, that's weird, huh, okay. Okay, let me um, refill my um, homemade margarita, all fresh ingredients. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to switch. I'm actually going to switch. Um, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to stand up, see if it's hard to read sitting down. So I'm going to give you an angle. It's going to be a weird angle. I'm going to raise my mic. I'm going to do it all. Um, well, let me talk about this first. So I'm going to read, um, some poems from, I did a little chat book with, um, Toy Derricot. I'm gonna read some poems from that. And then I'll read, um, and then I kind of started writing from the chat book. Uh, so I wrote the chat book, like this, it was supposed to come out you know, last March. Uh, we were supposed to have a whole bunch of events, so, you know, pandemic hit, that never happened. It did come out last March. It's called A Bruise is a Figure of Remembrance. And basically what Toy and I did is just, she sent me a poem to start. And then I just wrote, you know, whatever I was inspired to write or called to write, I guess, um, after reading her poem. So I'll, I'll read some poems from this and then I'll read some poems that come after that, kind of an extension of that. Let's see. Let's see if we can get this angle right. You might not be able to see my whole face, but that's okay. You can see me. You'll be able to hear me though, because I'm going to hold this mic up real tight. Okay from which the thing is made. In the end, I suppose defeat is inevitable. The closing of something once delicately propped, open, a silk curtain floated back to its nature or a mother, which is what this is really about. Fetish of the mother, the fetish of her under my tongue, bleeding about, bleating about. Even I, can't let go, can't sift her being, that part of her that's her from my hands. What's wanted is not to be gotten, no frolic in dancing fields, no cupping of the invisible cup, gentle water, soft hand, sweet ache of breath into mine. Mine slats between what was it, what is it now? When your voice comes through my ear, technological and distant, the crack of it as much a weapon as a frozen foot, as much the desert's reflective water well as any. You see that? My hands arching around what would be absence if absence were wrought inside the body. We both hold it. A, a forever flat road, nothing on either side, just air and land and fragrance like sun or metal, the eyes sublime coma, a road inside the throat to soothe the mother. When I say absence, I say dirt under the grandma's fingernails, a break in speech like the drunken cavern I enter each night to get outside of feeling. Her name, my name, her back, a nude trunk, rigid in the face of her God, a real God, 
in order to say existence is not here under sable palm, whatever dinosaur lingers in the unknown body of from nowhere. Records desist, action truncation, I or anyone can be the er witness come sad trinket of no remaining objects when a person was, when the circumference was as narrow as a fly, what replaces them? Speaking of replacements, of the way seeking never turns out quite right, and the animal in you grows a ratty teeth, substance akin to a quilt, really, your bare raw beat a racket, also what holds you, what rips is also your own arms wrapped around you, steady like blood or the rivers that once were, or flowers blooming after bombs and in the junkyard of the mine. Perspective is supposed to yield clarity. To waste years half alive, gumbled up in one's own lazy wallowing how is how the tonic lay across me like a monster blanket. I watched a lot of porn. I drank a lot of whiskey. I let my body just wander around as if it had no mind, just body and buzzing the way vibration can make you hover above yourself and the feeling is exalted and you don't ask any questions at all about what life means. A bit of animal is the secret to the unasked question and openness to squander what will cease to exist anyway. And yet what quarantines do not produce a desert of wifely longing? What kind of current, what kind of system, what kind of wealth, what kind of birthright or digging or commonwealth insisted on its own bright realm, territories of defeat. And yet the garden, swathed in bronze sunlight, a bruise is a figure of remembrance, its blue arrows, hums, She said, I wish I prayed I would pray for you. And we all wanted a shape of prayer in our brains taking over instead of chomping on itself, stupid little elf. God has never come to me. We surrender in the teeming utterance of materials soaked with sentences already made in air and by machines. The country says freedom crushed under its own dream weight. I did not make up this song. Design within reach is having a work from home sale, the coming apart, the giant laceration across the sky. We all feel it. Look at the fire, look at it, like all the rage of all the smallest beings. Cities, once buildings are now people. Humans emerge from cement beams flailing out into sun, humming emptiness like flies and burdens, bottoms of shoes all contaminated. The surfaces lie, steel distractions, distorted visions, the reflection of one's face on a subway pole. I'm far away from it. Tucked in, writing from bed, blue sky, dead obligation on my tongue. I can still taste it, isn't that funny? Zurita burned his face with a branding iron. When we itch is what that says. I squint and see into, not sure, all the things I thought I'd forgotten. All around us decay, we can smell it. The white mills, white air between us. Pretend we exist, our, our wiry diving into labor of hand jobs and blank rooms. Try language, try excessive sweetness. No names for things, no names for phenomena. Wound gathers around borders. How long can we live without a body? Once the body, once it's spiked desire.
delirium of crux, delirium of crux, central cavity of a divide that swarms the body's guts. Elsewhere, corporeal men made to eat at each other's necks, hundreds upon hundreds, a caterpillar, iron in the face. Think of other body rows, uh, other shit and piss baths. Think of acquiescence now. Think of the stratosphere being slightly beyond. I've been given a life to carry around and nurture its preciousness. To say me and then look out and see there's nowhere to go. I remember the way California holds itself distinguished in elemental cacophony. Things just glow. Even there, a cotton wad filled my mouth when all glut from misuse. Hey, Firestar, I used to say, come on over here and let me walk you. And the answer was mostly yes. Since the first sacrifice, that cohesion dispersed, only lull left, quote, pause, they say, no such thing as, quote, culmination unless cupping the squeezed out life black, a delicate furry thing, disturbances and gun buying. My mother refuses everything. Her body is mostly skin, mostly enduring. I hear hope in her voice. She tells me when the pain ends, when calm comes, she's going to buy me a birthday present and it's going to be a good one. Remember, soft to fingers, rain, the clean feel of snow, the way a child body can walk through a blizzard unbeknownst to anyone invisible and deep inside of her own feeling space. Somewhere else a cage rattles. In that place, fingers raw to bone, but here gorgeous desolation and the first remembered sign of one's selfness. The eye emerges, a staff, a kingdom. And to exist is what it has always been, a woman lounging on a velvet chaise or a woman doing someone else's laundry figuration, a boy with a bag, etc. America cannot distinguish certain urgencies from faith. Drones overhead dumping nothing into something. How to enter belief, a quest, a dissident reaction, I have said everyone, but I meant a few. I have said chaos, but I meant catastrophe, the whole nature of loving another person. I have said everything, but really the poem is meant to register the particulars, these pants from anthropology like black balloons. There is a black man on my street walking with a bat and safety goggles, his little white poodle trailing behind him. The first touch in a dark bar hallway, just the right pressure, a voluptuous sinking narrative right out the window if there could be a window. As if the tender body is, as if the will is tender. And like any creature that has its hood up, you take a photo of yourself in front of the window Rain so dark, the day and vision so desired, the way you are desperate for, so desperate for beautiful adventure, the light shut off and the sweat of some hot stranger in your mouth, as if to say before is to enter a house filled with teenagers lying on top of each other, that I tell you that it's raining, it's hard not to, it's hard to think that it's already night and necessary how any Green is a wild form. And lastly, I don't want to inspire devotion if it means the eye becomes separated from the world. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, wow, thank you so much. That was 
gorgeous. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry that we can't hear applause in mm -hmm. Zoom, um, but if you, if you look in the chat, um, there's a lot of, a lot of love. Um, although Noel, you have to, you have to, you're, you're still on, you're still on direct to me. Um, I said, I said, I don't know. Well. Um, and, and, and actually, so we're going to take a five minute break and at 740, um, we will come back with Carl. Um, I will talk in the middle of that as, as the rest of us will. Um, so a few kind of housekeeping things we should mention. So here are the, um, ways to support um here are the ways to support uh kgb so there is the fundly sorry this is the um this is the gofundme and then where's the where'd the fund fundly go sorry I, i'm messing this up i thought i had it open but um and if you haven't been here for the Fundly before, we will point out that um, if you pay, if you give, if you donate $15, um, there are two drinks waiting for you when you're all vaccinated. And there's a $4 tip for employees. And it, it goes pretty high. Um, you can make a donation of uh, $50,000 and you will have a $45,000 bar tab. And so if you go with that option, we're gonna assume that the drinks are on you. Um, the next time we see you. And um, there's also a um, Venmo, if you wanna make a, a donation directly, um, you can go through Venmo and um, whatever you might've tipped your bartender tonight, you might send to Dennis Wojcik, the owner of the bar to keep um, the bar and the bartender um, afloat. And, um, I think that's um, Margo. Do you want to? Do you want to? Uh, we we have Margo um, Taft Stevens, who is the editor of Slappering Hall Press, and she was putting in the um, the chat some of the events. Because um, Don, your chat book with toys on Slappering Hall, right? So, Margo, did you want to say anything? Well, it's so exciting to point on again, and it's wonderful to hear the reading and wonderful to have published the chapbook. I hope everyone can get a copy. It's um, available at the Hudson Valley Writers Center. And um, thank you for this wonderful reading, Don. It's great to hear you again. Thanks so much. Thank you. Sure. And I think I muted myself. Um, I'll put in the links for bookshop so that you can order um, Don's other books and Carl's other books. Um, it's, it's exciting to see all of the people that we have here. And I know I'll, I'll leave some people out, but it's great to see Don Yorty, who's a series regular, as you heard, sometimes sets the same things on fire. <laughs> hey, Don. Uh, <laughs> um, and Kosi and Kulaleka, who is, um, who did an amazing, he, we had this reading and the other person didn't show and we were really embarrassed, but Nkosi kept everyone wrapped for a full hour. We were just like, it was amazing. It was one of the most exciting readings we've had at KGB. Um, let's see, Marwa Halal, I am, I've never met you, but I'm obsessed with your poem, Who Real? Um, Larry Kaplan just came in. Um, Erica Meitner, fantastic poet and KGB friend is here. Uh, I know I'm leaving people out, but um, it's just so good to see uh, so many people here. Um, all right, has everyone freshened up their drinks and gone to the bathroom? Are we ready to move on? All right, okay. um, let's do this. All right, I'm really excited. Okay, Carl Phillips. Carl Phillips is one of the hardest working and most influential poets in American letters. Since 1992, Phillips has never gone more than three years without publishing a book of poetry. Since 2011, he has been the judge of the Yale series of younger poets, one of the most influential and longest standing book prizes in the United States. Phillips prizes include fellowships from the Guggenheim Foundation of the Library 
um, from the Library of Congress, um, from the Academy of American Poets. He's received the Los Angeles Book Award, a nomination for the Griffin Prize, a, Tim, a Kingsley Tufts Award. He has been inducted into the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, uh, among many, many other accolades. Um, in addition to his many books of poetry, Phillips has also published two essay collections and a translation of Sophocles. The pyrotechnic syntax of Phillips is often attributed to his training in classics. And whether or not that is true, the way that Phillips can turn a sentence continues to amaze me. I never realize how smoothly and carefully the clauses and phrases are building until the whole thing suddenly comes into focus often recasting what had been glimpsed or thought understood into something transformed and crystalline and pure. Philip's poems have a quality of an echo chamber to them, or perhaps the effect of the sound dampening chamber that let John Cage hear his own circulatory system, recasting what you already know and live with into something entirely different and thrilling. There's a calm in his work that is imbued with an ache, a stately pacing that embodies both loss and desire, or a movement of language that points to how we are fallen, but how we are still standing, that points to how desire is an engine and a tether, driving us forward and holding us back. And the generosity of the poems is matched by the generosity of the man. Um, Carl, like Don, is one of my favorite people to spend time with, and there's nowhere I'd rather be than here tonight with them and you. I am obsessed with Carl's poem singing, which begins overheard late this morning. Don't blame me if I am everything your heart has led to. So hear me KGB tonight, don't blame Carl if he is everything American poetry has led to. Please give a warm KGB welcome to Carl Phillips. Hello, um, can you hear me? I guess you can. Um, Thank you, Jason. That was a wonderful uh, introduction, though I actually feel infinitely lazy. And so I don't know where all the hard work is, but, you know, <clears throat> things just happen, I guess. Um, and thanks, John, Matthew, Jada, for all your assistance in bringing us together. And thank you, Don, for that amazing reading and for the, the honor and privilege of reading with you. It's exciting as always. So I too wish we were <clears throat> wish we were there at the bar. Although I have to say, I have come, I finally found my my lifestyle as it always is, is actually now how we live. So it's actually been, you know, now I just hide in my room, which is all I ever really did. And whenever I went to New York City, I just felt like a lost country mouse. So, you know, but I hope everyone else gets to go there in person and I'll just stay in my room. Okay, so I'm gonna read poems, obviously. Um, I'm gonna read some from the book that came out last year, Pale Colors in a Tall Field, and some from this chat book that actually came out a year before that, but it was, it was written after the poems in Pale Colors. So it's actually newer to me. And mm, I guess this new poem that from something. But anyway, I'll just start. I wish I could be like Dawn and have a microphone and stand up. I, I need to, I feel like I really made it with a ring light, but <clears throat> got some more work to do. Okay, this is called And If I Fall. There's this cathedral in my head I keep making from cricket song and dying, but rogue in spirit still bamboo. Not making, I keep imagining it as if that were the same thing as making and as if making might bring it back somehow, the real cathedral. In anger, as in desire, it was everything, that cathedral. As if my body itself, cathedral. I conduct my body with a cathedral's steadiness. I try to, I cathedral, in desire, in anger. Light enters a cathedral the way persuasion fills a body. Light enters a cathedral the way persuasion fills a body. All right, um, this is called Dangerous Only When Disturbed. 
Of bird songs, I know only three for certain, cardinal, blue jay, raven, though perhaps the last two don't count, not as song, more call than song, more cry, by which I mean exclamatory, not the kind with tears, not that tears can't be song sometimes, depending on who's weeping, for what reason, and with what degree of restraint, finally, at least half of what any music worth being called music's made of. As for the rest, release. Does that still sound right? Did you know the blue of the blue morpho butterflies, iridescent wings isn't biological, but an engineering of light, that they're not blue at all? In the song of you, in the song I make of you, in which your horselessness means a fear of horses, nothing more than that. You're a man asleep beneath the willow's umbrella. You've grown your hair out. The hair rises the way dream does to the cool descent of the willow's branches. From the thicket that hair and branches and dream make, I haven't forgotten you. It's just I've been distracted between the sound of birds singing somewhere and this inability to keep any song left inside me from ruining everything, or so I tell myself. And like that, if not true, as in provable, as in here's proof, it's true enough to believe in. You're awake, I think. Your mouth is moving. Um. <clears throat> Forever, I've never had anything much to say in between poems because when I, if I try to say something, it usually comes out stupid. So I'm not saying much. That was my pattern between those, that last poem and this one. See how, see why I don't do it. Um, okay, this is called, a little closer though, if you can for what got lost here. Other than that, all was still. A quiet, so quiet that as if silence were a kind of spell and words the way to break it, they began speaking. They spoke of many things. Sunset as a raft leaving the water in braids behind it. Detachment, the soul, obedience, Swans rowing at night fall across a sky filled with snow. What did they wish they could see that they used to see? To mean no harm or to not especially just now be looking for it. What would they wish not to see? Could they stop seeing? Courage mattering so much less than not spooking easily. Maybe all nerve is. The search and rescue map wildflowers make of a field in summer, deserving it versus asking for it, versus having asked and been softly turned from. They said it would hurt, and it does. <clears throat> this poem is called um, So the Edge of the World. I'm, I'm just looking at this clock and realizing, I think I've been reading 15 minutes and it's been like five. It's very disturbing warping of time, um, but <clears throat> fine. So the edge of the world is this poem. Back then we'd fall asleep to the wind at night. The wind was enough. I think we thought sleep meant rescue and because sleep came easily, always unannounced, we were safe. But if safe, why the need for rescue? And since when does rescue amount variously now to the forgetting that sleep offers, now to dreams not so predictable distraction? I almost said aloud into the rooms dark all around us last night. Though this morning, these seem precisely what rescue comes to or can, and my mistake has been in thinking of rescue as something more permanent than hard distraction, 
sleeps soft, impermanent forgetting. The wind was enough, mostly, not always. Not those nights when the wind, as if done at last with forever having been a wind, became all song instead. A song of abandonment, a wordless one. When you abandon a thing, best if you can to do so utterly, without words, yet with an outward tenderness so believable, why else does it hurt still? Even now, the mere idea of singing it. All right. Um, okay, I do have something I can say about this next poem. First of all, it's called Ghost Choir. And second of all, it mentions Marcus Aurelius, but don't be upset or alarmed. You don't have to know anything about him. And why do you mention him therefore? I can hear my students saying. <clears throat> That's my usual response when my students ask things like that. Um, and what else? Oh, that it's going to seem maybe as if it's very scattershot, as if everything's moving from moment to moment without any real connection. Uh, that's deliberate, <clears throat> but uh, it may seem a little strange. I don't know. At the time, I thought I'd come up with a new thing, you know, wild leaping of thought. I don't know. Ghost choir. What injures the hive injures the bee, says Marcus Aurelius. I say, not wanting to hurt another this late should maybe more than count still as a form of love. Be wild, bewilder. Not that they hadn't, of course, known unkindnesses and been themselves unkind. When the willow's leaves back again unfold all along their branches, the branches routinely in turn brushing then lifting away from the pond's face, it's too late. Last night, I doubted as I've not doubted myself in years. Knowing a thing seemed worthless next to knowing the difference between many things. The fox from the hounds, persuasion from the trust required to fall asleep beside a stranger, who I am and how I treated you and how you feel. So that it almost seemed they'd either forgotten or agreed without saying so to pretend they had. Did you know there's an actual plant called honesty for its seed pods that you can see straight through? Though they'd been told the entire grove would die eventually, they refused to believe it. The face in sleep, like a wish wasted. To the wings at first, a slight unsteadiness, then barely any. What if forgetting's not like that? Instead, stampeding, panicked, just a ghost choir of legends and rumors of the myths forged from memory, what's true and isn't, that we make of ourselves and even worse of others. Not the all but muscular ache, the inner sweep of woundedness, no. Not tonight. Say the part again about the bluer flower, black at the edges. I've always loved that part. Skull of an ox from which a smattering of stars keeps rising. How they decided never to use surrender as a word again. I do have a fun fact about this poem. Um, I was, I've been listening over and over to the two Taylor Swift um, albums that came out last year because I'm determined to memorize every single word. <clears throat> Since there are certain people like Joni Mitchell, Taylor Swift's another one where I must know all the catalog, every word. Anyway, I've been interested now that Taylor's written enough, you know, songs. It's interesting to see how she kind of tags herself. So on an album, she'll have something and then you realize, oh, that's something from two albums ago. You know, Madonna does it too. Anyway, maybe everyone does it. I'm just picking up on it. Anyway, in this poem, at the end, you can, you may recall, I mentioned, say that part again about the bluer flower, black at the edges. But 
in the next to last poem in another book of mine, Silver Chest, it talks about a flower that is the bluer flower, black at the edges. I was quite pleased with myself that I could refer to that and no one would get it, but I would feel a little hum of, I don't know, recognition when I read it. Okay, more evidence of why I don't say much between poems. Um, this poem is called Soundtrack um, for a Frame of Winter. And it too is in this chapbook. Soundtrack for a Frame of Winter. There's a forest that stands at the exact center of sorrow. Regrets find no shelter there. The trees, when they sway, sway like the manes of horses when a storm's not far. There's no reason to stay there, nothing worth going to see. But if you want to, you can pass through the forest in the better part of a long day. Who would want to though? To have entered the forest changes nothing about sorrow. It's a forest, not oblivion, not erasure. Some have entered it in the name of distraction, if only briefly, from the sorrow within which the forest thrives to no apparent purpose. Fools, dreamers, the desperate from whom it's best, if at all possible, to look calmly away, the trees of the forest at the center of sorrow, the exact center, all but say, or that's what it sounds like on windier nights, tonight, for example. At the forest's exact center, almost impossible to find, but I've been there myself. There's a makeshift grave, more than likely overgrown by now, with weeds, moss, the usual, with defeat, desire, the usual. Wingless ambition, frangible hope, misunderstanding, i.e. mistake, another form of weakness, i.e. the usual. That the forest itself contains no apology doesn't mean you're not hurt, or I'm not sorry, or I didn't hurt you. Uh, this next poem is takes a title, its title is from a line by, uh, in a poem by Linda Gregg. Um, the title of my poem is, If It Must Be Winter. Linda Gregg has a poem that ends with the lines, if it must be winter, let it be absolutely winter. <clears throat> okay. Um, if it must be winter. Not crowns not conquest defined in terms of how many fear you or fear to say otherwise. Not by these will you know your own royalty, but in smaller ways, how to the least gesture there's more power than seems reasonable, though it will feel deserved. So I was told, and they have not proved wrong. I've but to open my hand, bees come to it the slick fur of bees, assembling as toward an honor in no way expected, though each time the honor remains mine as if almost it should, as if certain privileges had to do with destiny. Do I believe that? Do I? My hand a sea, across which the wings of the bees flash like signal flags, whose patterns, instead of translating, I make up my own translations for. I shall do as I please. As a lovely argument can make a difficult truth more clear, if not more sweet. Though is there not a sweetness to clarity that can almost make the truth seem worth it? To say I'm not quite sure makes me no less king here. Sometimes I open my hand and there's no sea at all, just a windy plain. What appear to be dust storms crossing it turn out on reaching me to be the disappointments, all of them, that I never intended, each one on horseback, my cavalry, each face raised toward mine as if awaiting command, hungering for it, forgetful, 
or a stupid. I can see no difference. Look away from me. I haven't said you can look at me. All right, I have two more poems. <clears throat> this is called, oh, this poem is, see, now it's gonna seem as if Jason was right that I have a book out all the time <clears throat> because I don't try to, I don't. I'm, I mean, I write a poem or two poems a, a month and they add up, I guess, I don't know. <clears throat> so this is a title poem from a book coming out next year, um, next February. It's called, the book is called, and the poem is called, Then the War. All right, then the war. They planted flowers because the house had many rooms and because they'd imagined a life in which cut flowers punctuate each room as if each were a sentence, not just to be decorated, but to be given some discipline with the most memorable sentences, like people always slightly resist. Spit of land, rags of cloud rack. Meanwhile, hawk's nest, winter nest, stamina as a form of faith, little cove that a life equals, what they meant, I think, by what they called the soul. Twilight taking hold deep in the marshweed in the pacassandra where the wind can't reach. Then the war, then the field, and the mounted police parading their proud looking horses across it. Then the next morning's fog, the groundsman barely visible inside it, shadow-like, shade-like, grooming the field back to immaculateness. Then the curtains billowing out from the lightless room toward the sea. Then the one without hair stroked the one who had some. They closed their eyes. If gently, hard to say how gently. Then the war was nothing that still bewildered them, if it ever had. I'm gonna finish this poem. It's kind of an unlikely finish. A poem called My Monster. Uh, and so that'll be the finish. My monster. This hill, even if a small one, this hill with us and the dog, the same dog forever moving shadow-like down it to where the hill disappears. For some of a winter long ago, back when empathy still seemed a form of love, more static maybe, less steep, but just as complicated. I stayed in a small house, cabin-like, but no cabin, at the end of a pier that jutted out into a harbor the way piers do. It was January. Why so this quiet? He used to ask in his language. I barely knew his language. I'd turn him over and there was sex or not then and there was sleeping after. At night, as I lay in bed, the whole place would rock, mostly gently, which was the tide finding higher shore again, or sometimes the wind making rough with water, as was the case one particular night when it was snowing, snowing over the sea and windy. I know resemblance is not equation. I know equivalence doesn't mean translation. I say there was a wind, and that's often how I remember it. But tonight it almost seems the night must have been windless. I remember the steady verticality with which the snow fell, falling into the sea. I turn him over. I barely knew him. Why so this quiet? The crown looks good on you. The veil does too. When you lift the veil, the future's everything you wished for. Thank you. Thank you. 
This is where I want to just zoom out the screen. <laughs> I'll just mute. Oh, my... thank you so much. We won't, we, we won't keep you long. Uh, oh, thank you. That was wonderful. I speak for everyone, um, which I don't, which I try not to do, but yeah. I'll do it here. And so that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So, I mean, in, oh, no, in the Don, you already tells us silver chest is sold out out of stock. Look at that. That's true. I was, I was going to put some Taylor Swift in the uh, chat, yeah. but I, I didn't, I, I didn't want anyone to like, you know, be going off to YouTube to watch Taylor Swift. Well, yeah, did you hear that she's going to re-record her entire first few albums or whatever to, because uh, she wants the rights to the masters? It's interesting. I wonder, like, how much can, how different will they be? It's going to be an interesting question. I don't know. Uh, which ones will be on Spotify? Oh my but god! We'll be, we'll be back next week for more Taylor Swift. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll continue to say, who, who, who will we be back with next week? Um, I believe it is Lawrence Joseph and Kate Marvin. Yes, Kate yeah. Marvin and Lawrence Joseph. The um, the Zoom link that you use to come here will continue to work all spring. Um, if you would like to read in the open mic, that will be on March eighth. Um, and you can private any one of us um, curators. So that's uh, Jada Gordon, Matthew Yeager, uh, John Deming. If you um, if you are not getting our emails, you should send a private message to Matt Yeager and get yourself on that list. And am I missing anything? Or you can type it in the that. chat. Yeah. Type it in the chat. And feel free to drop them. Even if you guys, if anybody imagines that they were at the bar, would they have given a, a dollar tip to Sagey or something? Um, throw a buck at the bar. I'm sure they would not uh, shy away from accepting it. Um, and we're really hoping that they will be back up and thriving. I think that they are actually reopened or they were when things were open, but with social distancing guidelines and such. And now uh, not so much. So, uh, but maybe, you know, yeah. uh, all these vaccines that they're talking about distributing in the first hundred days, maybe we get there <laughs> by what? September. And it'll be an extravaganza. We're going to try to get Jaeger to fly in. All right. <laughs> All right so I'm going to, I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>